Alright guys, in this video we are going to pimp our ride. So we got this photo on Photoshop taxicab.jpg that you can just open and the goal of this exercise is just to transform this sediment into this wonderful taxi cab like this. Okay, so you're going to, as I say, just open the taxi cab file and the first things we're gonna do is to duplicate this layer by pressing Ctrl J, okay, in order to avoid any mistake. Um, as you can see, the wall image was black and white, so this is the first step we are going to do. You are several ways to do that. You can unsaturate your image by going to Image, Settings, and go to Desaturate the image. The problem is that it's a little bit flat. It missed something, some some values. Okay, uh, in values, uh, um, I'm thinking about values in terms of black and white balance into it. Let's see what could happen if I can do better. I'm just going to hide this in order to compare this two elements. So again, I'm going to duplicate my layer here. I'm going to create an adjustment layer here. And um, we're going to select the black and white adjustment layer. So as you can see, it's black and white. but you, you can already see that the values are a little bit different and we can enhance this value even if I'm so you can see that it's open the properties panel onto the left or the right it's depend of your of your settings I advise you to let it on the left side because you don't specially need some other stuff on the right side um, so you can see that for for instance into this image there is a lot of blue bluish and purple value so if we set this element, to more black, you're gonna see that we can really create the kind of effect that we want. If I want something more, uh, more shiny with a lot of um, clinking detail into it, you can really go over this kind of stuff. Okay, don't go too much. You don't create some artifact here. Uh, and mainly, I don't specially care about the taxi here because I'm, we are going to transform it and to let it in its original color. Okay, but you can see now the difference between this one and this one. You can really create the kind of mood that you want into this element, okay? So let's erase this by pressing suppress. So now what we can do in order to create this taxi cab in yellow, um, we, you, you can see that on this adjustment level, um, adjustment layers, you have some mask here. So if you follow the previous video, you know that you can paint uh, with the brush tool into this element. So this is what we are going to do. We're gonna set a hard brush on the size at something like 30 pixel, a little bit less, maybe 20. And I'm gonna begin from here. And if you want to go to straight line, I mean, if you're something you're you're shaking like this, that's not really a problem in Photoshop. You can hold shift and do some straight line like this. Okay. So the goal is to overpass on just the way of the car, not especially the wheel, because you can have some elements in bluish or other color and don't need that. I just want this element here. So I advise you to go that way to make the turn around your taxi cab like this. And I'm going to get maybe over, I'm going to let it black and white. And again, I'm going to just select the element that I want, really the strict minimum here. If you go too much like this way, you can still change the color for the white and erase, but you're not going to erase, you're just going to paint into our mask here. Okay. So as we can see before, so that's really convenient because it's flexible and it's non-destructive. Okay. This is why most of the pro professional designer and Photoshopper, digital painter use the mask a lot because it's really, really convenient. It, it's just not for the sake of using it, okay? Um, because that's really allow you to bring back after the selection. That's allow you to do a lot of uh, features to enhance the selection and we've seen before. And now you can see that even if I'm picking my select tool, uh, you can see that quickly I can um, put that Oh, maybe you see there is still a tiny outline here you can go to select modify enhance uh okay you you're gonna appraise the the size of two pixels for example and now we can fill this with a black color with the paint bucket or with the several element we've seen so far i forget this part not really a problem uh, you can even change this a little bit 
to make it straight for example okay so I, I can correct this element like this I can correct yeah, this part here and again I'm clicking on alt and onto the label of my mask uh, maybe I don't need especially this um, this detail into into it so and I got a tiny detail here as low so I'm gonna erase this part here yes okay um, what we are going to do now is we're just gonna make a little bit of cleaning we're gonna um, just erase the tiny part here of the, um, the advertisement um, so it's really more a little bit more technical on it and uh, then we're gonna change a little bit the texture and add a little bit of light into this taxi let's do it we're gonna use the um, content aware function in order to see what happened here uh, first you need to do a selection so you can take the polygonal lasso and try to make the turnaround and double click at the end okay so now you can just go to image fill with uh, sorry edition fill and you're gonna go with content aware and let's see what happened it just took what was around the selection and it tried to replace you can see that there is still a tiny problem here but for the moment that's quite okay if you want to change this you can pick the inning tool here um, so this is uh, by pressing J um, and you can you really have to make it tiny I mean the, the same size that the element that you want to get rid of and smoothly you're gonna click and as you can see erase it so you can play back and forth with these two element content aware and the inning patch in order to see what happened you can see that it's very quick um, and even if I'm picking my element here you can still go yep and erase it okay so now let's see for the for the texture I can even go for the, the, the fuel tank element here yeah let's go get rid of this stuff the problem we could get is with some reflection of light like this but mm, if it's a tiny detail you're gonna get rid of just a blink you can see that it took me approximately 10 seconds in order to move this so now we are going to make an approximate selection of this part uh, what I want is that I just want to change a little bit of my texture so you're gonna pick all the elements that are yellowish I don't especially want the black part of this stuff so I'm gonna erase it just after I can go that way yeah something like this yeah so I've made my selection I'm gonna press ctrl J in order to copy it so you can see if I'm clicking on the eyeball with holding alt you can see what happened here so what I need to do now is to erase the part that I don't need here so you can pick the eraser pressing E make it smaller and I'm gonna click here go here holding shift and click again and erase the full light so this is not perfect because I still have some stuff here that I don't need keep in mind that it's just to create a texture okay it's not really we are not really like exhibiting to pimp my we don't gonna do that for real so I just need to yeah erase the part that seems a little bit too dark for me yep something like this uh, we avoid this uh, I mean I'm gonna do it now that's gonna um, give me less room after because if you don't you're gonna have more stuff to to erase after because we're gonna blur it now okay so we have our new uh, paint a fresh paint for for this car so now what we are going to do is to put a blur effect into it so it's I advise you to create a dynamic object right clicking convert to dynamic object that's gonna allow you again to go back and forth onto the settings so now let's go into filter blur Gaussian blur and yeah six seems okay so as you can see here you got the preview and that's make it blur okay so you can even try to do a moving uh, a motion blur you can go to blur again and motion blur and you can set the direction here so let's see that if, if you press shift again you're gonna have some degrees um, you, you're gonna move from 15 degrees every time so that's very convenient and as you can see if I'm going too far the effects is totally lost okay and I'm gonna have to do some some quick cleaning here so I don't need specially to do that that way just to have an overall view of 
what's happened here does it yeah it doesn't change so much stuff so i'm gonna let it like that way so now the problem is that i had blur as low the light here so it is not uh i mean it's a little bit jacked off uh so what what we are going to do is to suppress again this part here because we're gonna see that you still have some blurry particle here so let's pick the eraser again um so the only problem that we get is that we are not allowed to suppress directly an element onto this stuff okay as you can see if i'm picking my eraser here the message tell me that you should rasterize this dynamic object before you continue okay and then you're not going to be able to modify uh, you can click OK, but that's going to erase the fact that you can modify your blur effect again. It's just a question of choice. Or you can create a mask on it and paint in black. OK, so you can transform this. So I'm painting, careful, onto the mask, OK, not onto the image. Uh, e even if you try to paint on the image, it's going to tell you the same error message. So that's really convenient. Um, I'm going to do a, a quick cleaning here as well. Um, so you really have to get tiny, tiny brush and you paint on black into this element. This is why I like to use a mask because as you can see, if I go too far here, you can go back and erase the part that you need to really have something really smooth. Okay. Um, cause let's admit that we create after a poster, you don't want to have this sort of tiny artifact or tiny mistake here. It's not really a mistake, but something that it's not perfect. Okay, so now we are nearly good to go. Um, yeah, I can change maybe some detail here. Um, you're still gonna have some stuff that you can make better in this kind of stuff, but for the main part, that's gonna be okay. Now let's create a light onto our element. Okay, so this is my black and white layers that are still here, and on the top of it, I'm going to create a new layer. Uh, you're gonna pick this ellipse tool and create an ellipse that way. Okay, so now we are going to fill this with a white color. So I'm picking the white color, take the paint back and boom. I'm picking, I'm filling this part with the, the white color. So now don't forget to press Ctrl D to deselect. And now we are going to apply a blur. Filter, blur and Gaussian blur. Okay, so I'm gonna blur it a little bit, something like this. Keep in mind that it's gonna be our light, so the effect is not really perfect, not seems natural. Okay, so the magic of Photoshop is the way is able to display the, the layers. So here we are in normal, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna set that to screen. Okay, I'm in normal and I'm moving to the screen elements. Okay, uh, you can even choose. If you click on this element, just the second one, and if you go down with your arrow, you're going to be able to test them all, okay? And you can see that the better result for this element, this is sort of a cooking recipe. Every white element at the dark part, if you put that in screen, that's going to give you this shiny effect here. Because more now I'm able to move this the way I want if I'm moving my, my, my light onto this element, okay? So what I can do now is maybe, as you can see, maybe you don't have enough stuff here. So you can even stretch again your element. You can do nearly what you want with it. Um, so you can even add a new blur effect just under in order to make something really cool. You can even um, set some tinting glasses here. Um, so how can we do this? On your new layer, you can just select this part. You can go very quick with this stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna select this part here. You can even go that way, for example. And I'm gonna select the whole element that seems, uh, for me, that it's gonna be a glass, something like this. Yes, you can see that I go very quick. Okay, then we are going to fill this with a black color, okay? so. Now I can just double click. We are going to fill this with a black color, with the pin bucket or whatever. So now there is too much glass, of course. So I'm going to lower the opacity to see where did I need to erase the part. So again, you can use the eraser in order to do that, or you can use a mask. Okay. I prefer to use a mask in order for the same reason than before. If I go, because I like to go quick, 
So if I go too far here, I can change my color and go back, yep, and change that. Okay, so it's non-destructive, it's really useful to use the mask. Okay, so now you begin to understand the, the, the I hope the, the power of the mask into this kind of situation. Because uh, that's really quick and you don't need so much um, so much talent and also much um, uh, skill in draw or something like that. Okay, you just need to know to hold the shift key in order to do it. Uh, let's try to avoid this part again and maybe this quick part is low. Yep. So it seems like it. So now we can try to do that in a more stronger opacity. Is there something? Oh no, there is something missing here. Maybe I can get rid of this part here. So, yeah. Let's try to even avoid this part to, to make it more clean. And no, it doesn't exist as low. Okay. So, seems okay now. We can even try to play with the different blending mode here to see if that gives us something more feeling more natural. Well, I think the, the normal way it's okay with the opacity level of something like 80%, something like this. Okay, so our poster is nearly done. What I can do now is give you uh, some kind of another effect. We can add an adjustment layer for the U saturation. And now you can even change the color a little bit. Um, so I just move the tint uh, to with this slider and I can even set a little bit more of saturation to make it pop a little bit more okay and as you can see if you play too much with the luminosity here you're gonna that don't gonna have a, a, a good result so don't go too hard on this kind of stuff then we are nearly finished okay what I like to do to finish my kind of poster is to set the wall layer like this by holding control on shift Take them all, right click, convert in a dynamic object, and go to filter and camera row here. Um, so the camera row element is really useful to create some poster element. Um, what I like to do is to go on the exposure element that allow me to really make it pop. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit more um, precise than the light element. You can even go on to the contrast here. So really to make something strong, okay? Uh, you can go with the light element. I don't need especially to appraise the level of the light element. What I need to make pop is really my, my cab here. Um, you can go to the vibrant a little bit, but the, the element is already vibrant. And into this detail element, this detail menu here, you can go for the luminance here. The luminance is going to erase, you don't have to go too far with this, okay? You have the, the, the grain, the little element that you see is a little bit more, I'm going to show you from, yeah, from here, for example, you're going to see that it adds a lot of particle here. And if you go with luminance, you're going to smooth it away, okay? So that's really something you can reach for a poster effect into it, okay? That's going to give something really a little bit more magic onto your element. So it's up to you after it. It's a, it's a personal choice, okay? I'm going to click on OK. So now, let's admit that I, I forgot to to play with something. I don't like this green part here, and I want to erase that. As I create um, a dynamic object here, I can still double click on this element. You're going to open a new document here that's called Tint saturation, U saturation dot PSB Photoshop binary file. That's very useful in order to make this tiny modification. And when it's done, for example, you just have to save and go back. So here we go. Here I just need to, I think, um, to modify a little bit my mask here. So I'm just gonna, yeah, put that off by, um, as you can see, painting into white into this element. Maybe I'm gonna do the same here because I, I don't really like this color that I get here. Uh, I can do the same over here. Maybe I can set off the yeah some tiny elements, some detail here, because I think it's could be interesting. Um, and this is done, OK? Uh, now I'm going to get rid of this stuff. Don't like it from far away. So let's get rid of this. You could see that it's very convenient to use the um, to use the mask tool that way. So now I'm pressing Ctrl S to save my PSB document. 
and close it. And you can see that it's automatically set again the effect on the element onto the other stuff. So this is done for our tiny poster. Um, so uh, I think that was really quick to do and the, the effect is really nice. So hope you enjoy and see you later. Bye bye.